So if you've been following the channel, you know that I promised the video where I explain kind of my connection to animals. And I'm saying animals in general because it doesn't apply only to mine, but I'll tell you a couple of instances, one being really super recent. Yeah. It kind of all started with my mom getting this German Shepherd. Um, I was pretty young, I don't know if I was 10 or something like that when I when we first got him, but after a few months he got very very sick with the parvo virus, which is a very deadly disease. And back then, and as we were um, navigating this illness, the vet told us that the chances of him surviving were like something like a three percent. Then there was one night when I was laying on the floor by his bed that was inside at the time. Very sweet. You're very sweet. Would you stop eating my hair, please, little girl? I got the feeling that of hope. I guess that's the only way that I can describe it. I was laying by him and I started feeling hopeful. And not because of what the bed had told us, really the bed really gave us the worst news ever, but I started feeling like there there was hope. And I remember <laughs> sitting by <laughs> I mean I mean I mean uh, <laughs> Can we just not do this right now, girls? Look at Mocha. She's like, can I please get some love, too? I love you all. I love you, Clara. Yes, I love you. And I love you, Mr. Blackie. Hello. Beautiful. I love you, Aria. And I definitely love you, Ava. <laughs> they all want to be part of the show. I guess and that's only I, 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 I guess that that's only appropriate for this video so I am not going to have them move anyway so I started feeling hopeful and then all of a sudden I remember looking at him like is it you is it you that you're hopeful is it you that it's gonna get better or are you gonna be on that I don't know if it was like 3% or something like that so I started thinking like that. I remember him not eating, not going to the bathroom, and basically just staying there in that bed until one day I got this feeling that he wanted to go outside. My mom was kind of like, why do you think he wants to go outside? But I remember opening the door and he walked right out. He went and peeing and pooping and did all the things and then in the end, okay, I appreciate your love, but you're being kind of rough right now. I love you though. So anyways, um, he went outside, this, uh, did his things and that was the first sign that he was starting to get better. A couple days later, he started eating. I remember I was giving him at night, I was giving him water with a little syringe, and I knew that he was gonna survive. I don't know why, and I can't explain why, because, you know, everyone told us he was gonna die, and that kind of, if, you, if you've been with me for a while, that kind of is the story of what happened to Rocky and how he almost died and my bed gave me 48 hours before he was dead and he survived. Um, I don't know how to explain these things but I get this feeling when there's something wrong or when there's something happening and I guess it doesn't happen <laughs> Hey, come here. It doesn't happen with every single feeling that they have, but when it's a strong enough feeling, I can feel it. And it's not like, you know, kind of Dr. Dolittle that I will be able to hear what they're thinking or what they're saying, but it kind of started this joke in my family that all my animals have a voice, and I make a different voice for each one of them. So, Clara has a very... <laughs> <laughs> annoyed kind of voice when I try to say what she's thinking or you know bratty like this one this one has the is the brattiest uh, voice that we have here in the farm and you know I just it's very easy Hi, Mocha. and this is a very sweet girl 
She has the sweetest voice. She's always saying, I love you. You're pretty. I love you. She wants to eat my lashes. That's what she wants to do with my eyes. <laughs> anyway, so I kind of started feeling these feelings around animals. And I kind of stayed away from animals for a while because that kind of scared me. I honestly was thinking that maybe there was something wrong with me. Like I had some kind of a problem and that people would start to look at me differently and honestly kind of giving me um, a bad look just because I sounded completely crazy. Now, fast forward, that was something that it continued to happen as I was having, oh Mocha, don't fight with him. Um, as I started having different animals, that continued to happen constantly. So it's not something that it stopped because I kind of stopped getting pets or I stopped doing things around animals. No, it was always there. And as I started getting dogs and other animals, that feeling continued to happen. Now, fast forward to having goats. It's been a blessing really to feel that and also a curse. Um, you know, I can tell when my girls are sick, not because I'm an amazing person and has the best knowledge, uh, you know, about animals, but it's very easy for me to sit here and start feeling their feelings. And it's kind of weird, I cannot explain it. I know I sound completely crazy, but I can feel the way that they're feeling. And because of that, it is easier to spot when they are there's like a lot of fighting happening around me and this little guy, oh yeah, I love you. I love you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're very cute. Anyways, so this really, this feeling that I get when one of them is sick, I also get it when they're extremely happy. So for me, it's extremely important to try to find the things that makes them happy. Like right now, they just want my attention. And I know it's kind of annoying to hear them all talking in the background, but this is the way it is. They just like to be, <laughs> I'll show you this. And then on front, I have more. They just like to hang out. They just like to spend time with me and it's very easy to kind of spot something different when I am able to kind of read their feelings. Again, it's <laughs> nothing scientific, it's nothing that I can explain with a test or something, but it really helps me um, to understand what they're going through. And it's kind of weird because it was one of those feelings that I just didn't want to feel. I really don't want to talk about this kind of thing with anybody because that makes me look like a completely not case but um, I just feel like it's you know the right thing to do and just share with you guys why I do some things differently from other people hi sweetie you're so cute did you know that oh gosh you're not eating my lashes you're not eating my lashes when Rocky got sick and I'm gonna link a bunch of videos in the description box down below and also on the top of the screen but when Rocky got sick he didn't I mean it would have been hard for me if I didn't if I wasn't like I am to spot him being sick so early like I could see that he was not okay um, but it wasn't very obvious to the naked eye so because of that, um, I feel like this reading his feelings kind of thing was what helped me start treatment on Rocky, even though I started with a wrong treatment. It kind of helped me start with a treatment and keep an eye on him, and he survived. As you know, uh, he, the vet told me, you know, we tried everything. I don't think he's gonna live. 
he'll probably have 48 good out 48 hours and then he's gonna pass there's no need to really uh, put him down it's just gonna happen and we're gonna keep him comfortable we're gonna keep him with you know the medicine and everything that he needs so he's not in pain anyways I didn't listen to the vet because as soon as I look at Rocky I got the feeling that he was gonna get better um, now I didn't know that he was going to get better but I had that feeling of hope again the same feeling I had with Kevin which was our German Shepherd so when I started feeling that I continued treatment despite the idea of the vet that it wasn't worth it I was just going to end up spending a lot of money on medicine and he was gonna end up passing anyways but if you watch those videos and if you didn't I'll have a playlist that I'll link down below then you know that it took him I don't remember but good 10 to 2 weeks to actually start bleeding like trying to talk to me to go back with his boys to go in the pasture it was just a really long process but he survived he's with us today and he's living his best life and I just attribute that not to my knowledge or my ability to keep him alive but because I was able to feel hopeful at that second that's what he was feeling uh, despite feeling like crap or you know it was just that same feeling that told me he is gonna make it if you keep trying now this far I, every time I felt that in an animal it's been the case and they do survive but now before I tell you what happened recently I want to tell you another story and this one is a sad one when Kevin got better he was bred to another German Shepherd and we kept one boy who was it was gonna be mine I think I was 14 15 at the time his name was Tommy and I took care of Tommy all day every day he'd go everywhere with me I would put him inside a bag and kind of take him with me in the bus even though it wasn't allowed and Tommy was born he was as healthy as he could be he was such a brat and he traveled with me everywhere but then there was one day that he got really sick and um, he uh, fought the same illness that Kevin, his dad, did, the parvovirus, despite getting the shots. He basically got it right before he's got his first shot. So when they gave him, it actually created like some kind of a reaction and he got really, really sick. I cannot pet everyone. I only have two hands. I know. You're gone. I love you. You're okay. You guys want some alfalfa? You guys do? Oh my goodness, they want alfalfa, yay! I'll bring you some in a minute. Let me finish, okay guys? Okay, okay, okay. What is this? Why are we fighting with each other on top of me? We don't fight. We don't fight. Especially with cute little boys like this one. You're so cute. <laughs> You're so cute. Stop fighting, Ambriere. It's raining. You guys want to go outside in the rain? <gasps> you guys want to go outside in the rain? Look at Clara's face. She's like, Do you? Do you? <laughs> I don't. But maybe you do, Clara. Anyway, so Tommy got sick and uh, I didn't get that feeling. I didn't get the hope feeling when I was with him. Uh, basically, he was doing much better than his dad when he had the parvovirus. <laughs> okay, 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 I love you. And he really didn't, um, I mean, he, we got it before it was, you know, before we did with Kevin. Kevin was already pretty advanced and he still survived. Okay. 
He thinks he's my boyfriend. He won't leave me alone. Leave me alone, little guy. Leave me alone. Oh my god. No, we're not eating my ears. Thank you, though. Hi, Annie. You're so pretty. Look at you. After battling with the illness for not too long, I was sleeping one night. I was sleeping on the floor. He was sleeping in his little bed and I made a, a, a bed in the floor because that's who I am. And I remember going to bed. He was sleeping and then around 2 a.m. he um, got up from his little bed. I mean, he was a tiny puppy. I mean, it was really, really, he was really, really small at the time. And he, uh, with big paws, ginormous paws. And <laughs> Clara is listening to the story like, okay, keep telling me what's happening. <laughs> so, okay, I'll tell you what happened, okay? She really invested in this story. Really invested. I love you, sweet girl. So, Anyway, they, uh, so he got up, went on top of me, and, um, like, he laid on my chest and woke me up. When he woke me up, I immediately knew that he was gonna die. Now, don't ask me why. I got the feeling, okay? It was a feeling in my heart that he was gonna die and that he was at peace with it. Like, he woke me up to let me know I'm dying and he stayed on my chest for a few minutes and then he passed away it has that day has haunted me forever really because more than likely uh, when one of my pets is gonna die i will get that awful feeling that they're not gonna make it and that it scares me so much and so it's one of those things that I feel like it's a blessing because it helps me more times um, come a spot when one of them is feeling a certain way and this is as far as you know when they're feeling scared or when they are feeling uh, lonely or when they're feeling sick or when they're feeling tired or when they're feeling cold or whatever it is. To end the story, I'm gonna tell you something that happened recently and just kind of to prove the point that it's not only with my animals, but with animals in general. You're so cute. You are. And you too. You're your mama's little girl. You're your mama's little girl. Yes, you are. I don't know if you can see, but she has some white eyelashes and some brown ones, <laughs> and it's the cutest thing. So I mentioned recently that I was working at this horse ranch, and I was um, taking care of some horses and cleaning stalls, and basically just working there in the horses area. There was this one time that I was cleaning the stalls, and I started feeling awful, like annoyed, but at the same time, like something was wrong, really, really wrong. I started feeling sick. It was just, it was horrible. So, and I was cleaning stalls, so I wasn't even with the horses. But then I get out of the stalls and I see one of the horses. And he is an older horse. He's like 20 something, 28, 29. And he was like, I don't know, he wasn't okay. And I realized that the way I was feeling was because he was not feeling well. Now, I could not tell you what was wrong with him because I have very limited experience with horses. But I told the other um, worker there, co-worker of mine, and she said, yeah, he's fine. Um, he's acting just normal. But I started paying attention because I could not shake this feeling. It was in my chest, it was in my heart, and I felt so, so, so sick and so horrible thinking that he was feeling that way. 
So I stood outside and I started watching him and after about 15 minutes, which I should have been working, but I stopped working and I started watching him, I quickly realized that he was stressed. One of the signs that you can know when horses are stressed is because they shake their heads like this constantly like they move around and then they start shaking their heads and they go eat and then they keep shaking their heads this way so he started biting the other horse that was by him he was uh, kicking the gate and he is an extremely sweet gentle it's just one of those horses that you really don't have to mess too much with him because like you ask him to stay and he stays you ask him to move and he moves you ask him to back up and he backs up he's not a rebel he is not um, how can I say he's like very easy going um, I never have to put his harness to work on him he's just he's just such a good horse and I knew that was a behavior that I didn't notice before I started feeling that way now again I talked to my co-worker and my co-worker said it's normal he's fine I went inside and the stalls again and I could not <clears throat> and I could not work I was feeling so, 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 everyone's chewing the cut around me. So it's not me, it's them. <laughs> Anyways, um, I couldn't shake it up. So I walked to the house where the owner of the ranch lives and although we never have to, um, I decided to go knock on the door at 8 o'clock in the morning and say there is something really wrong with Dylan. I don't know what it is, but I have this feeling in my heart that he is in pain, something is bothering him, so I stopped working, I watched him for about 15 minutes and this is what I see. The owner of the horse was not really concerned, um, but she said that she was going to go and check on him later. <coughs> to remove his coat or sheet and just let him be in the pasture. Um, long story short, the next day I go to work and there's a big sign where, you know, in the feeding room area where it says that he had, um, I think it's called bot flies, and they were in this upper area and um, I think it was on one leg. So he was the only horse that got it and that's why he was in so much mm, distress. Um, it's extremely itchy and he had eggs, he had to be shaved in the area where the eggs were laying and it was just um, a confirmation once again that I'm not going completely crazy that this feeling that animals share with me or I share with them I don't even know it's just something that it's not completely crazy it's something that I was again gifted with or cursed with because it's horrible to feel their pain when they're sick it's horrible to feel well, you know that they're gonna die and you know it's just all those things it really it takes a lot out of me but I could not live my life without animals because they really are the best part of the day I mean I I mean she's giving me a hug are you kidding me right now she's giving me a hug I love my animals way too much and maybe it's because we have this weird connection and I am able to feel what they're feeling so it's easy for them to relate to me. Now horses are extremely smart, goats are extremely smart and are able to relate to you in some kind of interesting way. Despite the idea that I know I'm gonna be uh, feeling the feeling of they're gonna die hopefully in the very very distant future um, it is worth the rest of the days that they're alive and that they are with me and that they're giving me that unconditional love that you can only get from an animal I mean as a mother I give unconditional love to my kids I do feel that way 
but sometimes we forget how pure animals are and how much of a difference can make in our lives if we're able to give them a chance. Now, I've had all kinds of animals, some more rebels than others. This, this finger is like that because of my great Bernice. Um, and that was another instance where I knew he would have um, made a big mistake if I couldn't stop him so I kind of grabbed onto him he dragged me through the cement and did this to my finger which is a very expensive and cosmetic um, surgery and so it's not always the nice thing of sitting down with them and be able to feel the love that they're feeling um, it is very easy for me to sit down and have my heart feel with the way that they're feeling right now. Um, I not only feel love for them because of how much I love them, but I feel the love that they're feeling towards me and it really, really makes my life so much better. So I guess I am kind of a weirdo and I, and maybe that will help you or understand why I am so different as far as the channel and as far as what I share with you guys and what I don't. I wouldn't change it though. Uh, I feel like having animals in my life makes my life so much better. It has helped me with my anxiety, with depression, with everything. I mean, there's no pill that do what these animals do for me. Um, there is really no solution other than feeling the love that they give me and that I'm able to give them. So I'm gonna feed them now because as you can see the feeder it's empty. Uh, there's another one back there but they want to be by me so they want the alfalfa to be right here so I can be covered in alfalfa in like 2.3 seconds but that's not gonna happen because the video is over. <clears throat> if you were wondering this is Gaia and she was bred the first try to Dom. Briere was bred the second try to Dom. Clara was bred to Lil Taz who's gonna leave the farm um, in a few months. Uh, Athene hasn't been bred. Um, I've had a hard time getting her in a standing heat so I might have to put her with Dom if I want babies or I might hold on and breed her with Annie's little girls for babies next fall. I'm considering it, but I don't know yet. My breeding plans are always changing, but I appreciate you coming and listening to my ramble and all my craziness. Hopefully you don't think less of me because I'm sharing this with you. And hopefully it makes a little bit more sense why my channel is the way that it is, why I share the things that I share, and why I pay attention to crazy things that no other breeder does. And, you know, why I ended up with five goats in my kitchen um, when Clara gave birth to Athena and her three brothers in February. It's just the way that they make me feel, whether they're feeling cold, sick, or ready to go. So thanks again. If you are new here and you like to follow our adventures, please remember to subscribe. Like this video if you enjoyed it. That helps uh, YouTube spread it around a little bit more. And I'm gonna feed them, although they're living their best lives around here. Hi, brothers. Hi, baby. Hi. They have little sweaters that I've been putting on them, but now they're winter coats. Uh, although they're very shiny and beautiful, they're coming in. So, you, your boys are cute. Yes, they are very cute. And you're very cute. Can I please have a girl from that belly that you have? Can I please get a girl from you and Dom? Okay, 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 okay. You guys chilling by me? I love when you do that because you make me feel like so relaxed. These guys are being 
very relaxed, I know. Right? <sighs> you guys are all special. Mm -hmm. My sweet girls and boys. All right, let's go get some alfalfa. You guys are gonna join me as we go get some? Okay, just because you guys are being good, get that. Get out, let's go eat. I'll give them just a little so that I can go in. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> 